Hi there. I get asked all the time, I want to make espresso at home. Sumner, what do I buy? And I've always been really bad at answering that question because I really don't know how. I don't know how to balance the, the quality of equipment with someone's budget versus the results they'll yield. So typically my answer would be something like a single group Marzocco, throw a grinder with it, you're looking at about $5,500 to start and not really realistic for most people for what they want to do as hobbyists. Well, one of my friends asked me that same question. Thank you, Trent. I didn't have an answer for them. They went and did their own research and came back with the Breville Bambino Plus. Fantastic machine, apparently good reviews. So I have the opportunity of unboxing this today. Breville, if you're not aware, huge household manufacturer of coffee equipment and goods and also recently acquired Barazza here in Bellevue, Washington. So let's let's go ahead and open this box up and see what's inside. And this is all encompassing, I believe. So I was given specific directions not to destroy the box. So I'll be very, very careful. It's a rental. All right. Oh my gosh. Right off the bat, first recommendation, don't open it up sideways. We have a porta filter here. This actually has a really nice weight. Comes with a tamp, very light, not a nice weight. We have a second basket. The razor, I think that is a, some sort of disperser. Instructions, I may look at those later. Oh, there's these little handles of the styrofoam. All right, because we're recording this, we'll carefully put the box down. So overall, this is a great looking machine. Uh, the tray goes in there very intuitively. The porter filter has a nice weight. The steam wand, the steam wand doesn't actuate on, on multiple axes. It's an up down. Also, you'll saw that I touched it with my hand. As a good rule of thumb, you'll always want to use this little finger thing here. The steam wand gets really hot, so that's, that's a bad habit or bad form for my part. It looks great. I mean, from a, a build standpoint, it feels really solid for its size. I'm really excited to try it out. A uh, couple of things, you should always you know, run some water through your machine before you actually use it. We won't do that because we don't really care. And the other thing is with home espresso machines, any espresso machine actually, make sure you're using filtered water. And there's a whole thing you can look up of what type of water. You don't want to use distilled water, but you want to make sure that your water has a low mineral count. That's just the quickest way to destroy an espresso machine. So we have some filtered water. We bought some coffee today, so we'll have some broadcast espresso. I think they're a Breaker 9 blend. We don't have any milk, so I can't test the steam one. That might be problematic. And yeah. I'm gonna cut. Okay, so I've been messing with this behind the scenes. Got the Breville Bambino, I think it's the plus. Got a Malconic Peak, paired them up. I got a couple things to help me out here. I have an Akaya Pearl, also have an Akaya Lunar. Not necessary, but you know, have them available. Things I learned so far on the first cycle. This will run a bunch of water through. This drip tray right here, if you pull this up, you can pull this out. This little thing is a floater. I think it's supposed to tell you, hey, your drip tray is full. I will say the drip tray capacity is extremely small. I doused everything in water already, so that's a good time to just go give this little dump right here. Awesome, I should have that electrical cords. The other thing that I learned is uh, you'll see that 
in here, everything is just super wet and you're not working with a lot of real estate. Uh, when you take the porter filter out, I found it was really hard to do it with enough power to unlock it, but then not spray this, this back piece here. Uh, other things are when you put this down, the steam wand, it's not doing it now, but before it was automatically steaming and the steam has, the steam wand has a huge amount of water purge every time. So what that means is there's this big lag between hitting the button and steaming. It'll just emit a bunch of water, which uh, makes it really hard to work with. Overall, I think I know what I'm doing now. I would say if you've never used a commercial espresso machine, you'll love this thing. You'll ball out, get a Breville, whatever. If you've ever used a commercial espresso machine, like a good espresso machine, you will hate this thing. It's so finicky and it feels like you're gonna break it. So, depends who you are. Would I rock one? Probably not. For $400, it doesn't make bad espresso, it's drinkable. Pairing it up with Malcona Peak, uh, I bought this before this color was available, so espresso parts, they custom painted this for me, so it was about five grand. Now you can get them for $2,300. I don't know, people on there hate on Malcona Peaks. I know who you are, but I think it, Pulled good shots. I'm happy with it. Pretty consistent. So let's do this. Let's uh. Okay. My right. my porta filter is empty. We've rinsed this. Everything's warmed up. I'm just giving this a little wipe down for the steam. This scale oh, is not zeroed out. That's why we put it on there. Zeroed out. And my weight for my coffee isn't completely dialed. It does come with this thing that. I actually am really impressed with this. This is called the Razor, like a Motorola flip phone. And if you've seen the disbursement tool, it's the same idea. You spin this in here. It's actually a really nice fit, great tolerance. I like that it's metal and not plastic. You can also use it to brush off your side, which is pretty nice. I found with this basket right here, 12 grams was the right amount. I started off going super aggressive to have them some instructions with some numbers in there, some pretty good data, but I thought the numbers were a little bit too high. So, zero that out, let this. That's at 12.7. So let's take this right here, see if I can do this. And as I spin this, we'll see that I have a little bit too much on here. So I'm gonna do it over the trash a little faster. So what we're ending up with here before I tamp that is 11.6. So maybe even 12 is a little high. I think that, that 11 grams is good. And I'm not sure if I can get this focused right here, but I actually went a little bit coarser for this roast state and for this coffee than I normally would. I found when I did a typical espresso grind, the, the pump seemed to really struggle to get water to penetrate through that. I also noticed that when I went a little bit higher. So still a pretty fine grind, finer than sand, I would say, or like, you know, some fine sand. And then I'm also not tamping as hard as I normally would. The tamp is really lightweight. It's weighing in at 82 ounces. So think about three and, a, or sorry, 82 grams of so three and a quarter ounces. It's very lightweight, where in comparison, you know, this right here is 25 grams, so almost a third of the whole tamp there. Go down straight. If you use the razor, you should have a nice level bed. I'm just gonna put a little pressure right there. That feels good. You wanna make sure that there's no grind on the basket right here, because what will happen is as you insert it, it's gonna put those grinds on the gasket. So basket to Gasket to gasket, not ideal. It's just a pain to clean and also wear out your gasket. It's faster. Uh, typically, I would I'd purchase again. I'm not going to. That's one thing about these buttons. I don't have them dialed in yet. It seems to lag, and I don't really know what the buttons do. They're kind of finicky, but let's go ahead and lock this in. 
And I'm gonna run this. See what I mean? Like just I'm trying to go tight to back to it says lock right there. But the whole machine kind of need two hands to to manipulate it. Uh, have my lunar fits underneath here. You could do it volumetric with a little measuring glass. You could eyeball it, but we have one here, so might as well use it. And this distance here is, I would say, pretty normal. You you could fit a mug in here if you're doing an Americano or a latte readily, easily. I do find that with these legs and this porter filter, I was getting quite a bit of spray. You're not getting a nice clean drop, which you're used to. So just know, expect to get a lot of splatter on this back. Uh, I believe it's stainless. And you'll want to use a microfiber on it and just be careful that you don't scratch it. Especially if it's a rental and not your espresso machine. So let's go ahead. I like manual mode because I'm weighing it here. I'm getting a little bit of fluctuation of the scale because it's not actually quite flat. There we go. We have from the milk a little temp sensor there. So I'm gonna hold down the button be in manual mode and be a little bit loud so just bear with me for a moment. Pumps vibrating in the back, waiting for that drop. A little bit loose right there, coming in really fast. We'll stop it right there. So that was actually a lot faster than all of my practice shots before this. A lot thinner than what I was expecting and not quite the, the crema that I had earlier. I probably should have recorded those shots because they came out pretty well. So from an espresso standpoint, we did approximately like a one to two, say 11 and a half in, 24 grams out. Not exactly a one to two, meaning I started with 12 grams of coffee as the goal, and my output, my liquid weight, was 24 grams. I think it's always just a really good starting point. The math is simple, and from there you can tweak it up or down. I would prefer this with a little less liquid in it, but overall, I'm happy with it. So we'll set that aside. I'm not gonna leave it there because it'll guaranteed fall when I undo this machine. One thing I, maybe it's a little bit different for me in this setup, I'm not actually in a kitchen. The extent, the, the plug for this is maybe 36 inches, three feet. So I guess in a normal kitchen, that might be good, right? You put the machine in front of an outlet, but if you have an appliance there, maybe a mixer, or you want this in the corner against the wall, there's not a plug there, you might need an extension cord for it. Or if you're building out a house and you have a, a plug in a cabinet or down below and you're running the cords behind things, uh, might need an extension cord for that too. I would definitely not recommend having this not in a, uh, a wet bar environment. So if you had a, a theater room or something or a break room where you don't have a sink and a drain right next to it, just by the amount of water that this thing emits, I think that would be a mistake. So let's unlock this now a grunt face you can see the puck there the pucks haven't been coming out super clean don't really know the reason why but if i look at this it's still retaining a lot of moisture so versus a normal espresso puck you're not getting a clean breakout This time, 11.7, that looks great to me. It's actually right what we're looking for. Let's hit it with our razor. Probably gonna have some dead spots in there, but we'll work with this. Make sure that, again, 
basket is clean of any grinds, residue. I want to be careful when I put this in that I'm not missing. I don't want to crack this puck and that can happen if you hear, hear a loud clink. So there is print right here that says insert. I would call that about eight o'clock. So you can feel it go in. Also don't touch here, it could be hot. And then we're just gonna lock it into place. Oh, overshot it a little bit. So locked in at the six o'clock position here. So as I was saying, this does come with a picture. It's really nice because it does have a min and max line on it. This espresso machine has an auto steam function as well as a manual function. I'm opting to use a Rattleware 12 ounce pitcher. You have a little bit more aggressive point on there and I just, I'm very comfortable with my milk. Kind of, I'm just comfortable steaming in it. It's, it's what I've used for a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and purge this for a second. You'll notice a lot of water is spraying out. Don't know what that was about. So you notice when I put the steam on down, it thought I was wanting to steam, so it automatically started doing the cycle over again. The melt came out really nice, nice and velvety, has that luscious, you know, maybe uh, describe it as Elmer's blue look to it. So there we have it. You can't see that, but maybe it looks okay. Can we get the angle? So yes, it is, oh, <laughs> it is possible to pour latte art with the Breville Plus. Let's give this a taste. Also, really bad form for where my fingers are. I'm just doing that so I could rotate it. I would never do that for anyone else but myself. Don't put your fingers there, folks. But, tastes like a cappuccino. Probably could have a little bit more foam in that milk, but overall, I'm happy with it. Now we gotta clean this machine up and get it back to its rightful owner. Oh, making a mess still. If you have any questions on equipment, or what I would buy, or beans. Probably shout out to Broadcast for this espresso here. And espresso parts for, you know, the pictures from Rattleware, also painting that Malconic. Let me know. Thank you.